Hi guys, for more video, please subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. Liboros Oshama, welcome to the show this morning. My pleasure. Now, six days after, we're still here. They've asked, they've asked the show to be released and then we're still getting pushback from the DSS. Do you believe that this is the administration's pers persistence, disobedience of the court is an act of lawlessness or there's some other explanation? There's basically no explanation for it. The only explanation we can deduce from this is um, a statement made by the chief law officer of the state, the legal advisor to the federal government, um, the attorney general of the federation, ambassador, um, sorry, um, um, Malami SN, that um, uh, somebody, in his words, I'm trying to recouch his words now, uh, that uh, somebody who contested an election and they lost um, that uh, was calling for a revolution and that um, and, and, and so so with that um, the only inference one can draw is the fact that they really didn't want to go to court they wanted to use arbitrary power to arrest him and they keep him even though they mount rule of law uh, but why mounting rule of law they also surreptitiously told you that uh, national security should take preeminence over rule of law, forgetting that the court did decide what is national security. And so now they want to decide what national security should be. They will be the accuser, they will be the judge, they will be the jury, and then the jailer. And unfortunately, um, we seems to be divided. Opinion seems to be divided on this issue. Some people who do not uh, like Shawarez face, you know, believe it because he campaigned against their, you know, quote and unquote, God then, uh, Look, Jonathan, so he should suffer the consequences. But they forget that we're talking about rule of law here. We're talking about arbitrariness. And so if it happens to Showare today and nobody says anything, it, that means it can happen to anybody tomorrow. Including political parties, they also should be wary. Mm -hmm. Because um, all you need tomorrow is to say, well, um, some politicians or Atiku, you know, um, he's, um, he's made certain comments that uh, threatens national security. And then they just keep them, even even if the court grants a bail, they will look for opportunity not to release him. I mean, a, a lot of people will say that uh, the strong point on the rule of law and uh, the federal government not obeying court orders has always been in the front burner. Uh, would you say the judiciary is independent, truly independent in this day and age? And, and I'm saying that on the heels of the reconvening of the courts recently and... Uh, the Chief Justice of the country is saying that the judiciary will be independent. It will not take orders from any other, you know, sector of government. It will stand firm and it will stand resolute. All right. Taka Muhammad did say that and he said that strongly. But when this is happening, how would you juxtapose that with the independence of the judiciary? Um, I would not want to paint the judiciary in one brush uh, because um, there are so many judges out there in spite of um, uh, the provocation, who are busy daily, you know, raising their heads high, you know, in upholding the sanctity of the rule of law, and um, in spite of intimidation and threat, also we also saw what Justice Taiwo Taiwo did, even though initially some of us disagreed with him. Um, and so there are so many like that, uh, so many names I don't want to mention here. Um, but you know, in another bread also there are some also who have been threatened. And they who have been cowed uh, by the same government, not just this government, it didn't start today, you know, successive government. You know, the attitude of our government at the center, even at the state level, you know, be this, mental, this military mentality of believing that the king can do no wrong. And, and so nobody should query the king. And so if court gives orders against state governors or president, then there is a problem. Uh, you hear some governors quarreling, why will it be, be the chief judge? You know, grant an order against the state governor. If you remember in uh, Mayor Rufai's book, the Accidental Public Servant, yeah. he did say when he assumed office and he knew that he was going to revoke, you know, um, uh, so many CFOs, that the first thing he did was to summon all the judges in the FCT High Court, and then they had an understanding that they were not going to grant frivolous um, 
um, restraining orders against the FCT government. And, and so it is that, that what we are just seeing is a carryover of what has been. It's just that, you know, this government had taken it to a, a, a very high, you know, unreasonable level that it is very conspicuous and obvious. That's why people are shouting as if it's, you know. Because a lot of, people tell, you, tell you, a lot of people tell you that the case of Dansuki is still there. Yes, yes. Now Showaware is yeah. still there. That's okay, has not been granted. Showaware is still there. A lot, a lot of other people too will cite the case of Olisabe too. Yeah, what I am saying here is that, I, in, in agreeing with you, is that this has this trend has started long ago. You remember those days when a court will grant, will give order, uh, um, if you remember, or passenger, when the Supreme Court did say release funds meant for Lagos, Lagos State, State Government. government. They said they were studying the judgment. Uh, the then Attorney General at some point said, well, um, uh, they will obey. In some cases, you hear the Attorney General saying, we will obey. And I asked myself, is it in your mouth to say you won't obey in the first place? You know, you hear the government will say, we are studying the judgment. And, and so what you have now is a carryover of those practice. Now, these ones don't even study. They either tell you that we have not seen a copy, even when there is, you know, a document endorsed you know, stating the endorsement, or they will tell you, well, we have seen it, uh, but we will appeal. They will tell all, you, they will remember, the, the Kaduna the, State Government, all they or there's the this case. From coming to, to, if, to no, put, they, put, 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 they would put have put collected a copy, like in yeah. Shawarez case, they collected a copy, received a copy, yes. endorsed, and then two days later, they said because they have not received a copy. Meanwhile, when the judgment, or the ruling was delivered, they had a lawyer in court. And, and so, they said they had not received the copy. In uh, Mary Fai's case, the government has actually smarter. The government said they were they, they will appeal. As if your intention to appeal acts as a stay of execution of a, a valid court order. You, you know, so that's what you have now that we're in a situation where and then you see supporters of government, people who should know, who should be angry at being oppressed, will tell you, well, the government has said they want to appeal. So what do you want them to do? Including lawyers. You now begin to wonder if truly we we are looking at the pro pro positions of our laws or we're just supporting politicians blindly. Okay, so we are seeing what the problems are here. And I want to just quickly compare it to the recent ruling that happened in the House of Parliament in the UK where the Supreme Court came and said, you know what, this suspension is lawless. And even though uh, Boris uh, Johnson did not agree with it, he strongly disagreed. He said, you know what, I am going to obey it. So we see a system that works. We now know that these people are not obeying the rule of law. How do we, how, like, what can be done in this case? Now, to just buttress that, the Federal High Court has threatened that they are going to jail the, the, the DSS DG if the order said to free Shawari are not obeyed. Is that a, a move in the right direction? Um, at the end of the day, who will execute the order? <laughs> who will execute the order? Because ordinarily, when, when the court gives an order, and that order is not obeyed, the court has inherent power to protect its order by, you know, issuing bench warrants, you know, in violation of court order, either uh, in the face of the court or outside the court. But here, when such orders are given, irrespective of who is involved, if you have an independent policing, those orders immediately are carried out. And that's why you would hear, you know, take the case of uh, the Prime Minister of Great Britain that you cited, where an advice or a policeman will say, well, I owe allegiance to the state and not you. You know, but here, all allegiance are owed to the president or the governor. And so that is why we need to look at the body language of Mr. President or the Mr. Governor before, you know, certain actions are taken, whether by the police commissioner or the IG of police. And, and so when you have, you know, such a lame dog approach or institutions to issues, others are, are obeyed, other, others are observing breach you know, than obedience to these orders. And then these orders will become paper tiger upon which they are written. And, 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 and so that's why, but it's very, it is um, it's a dangerous trend and what we should do as a people. Chowere did call for a protest because things are not, you know, working as they should be. Not, not because the government didn't promise. Asking the same government to fulfill the promises that they made. Fulfilling the promise that you made has become a problem now. So the man used the word, the word revolution. But they forget also that there's only a limit to how far the people can take. If the incidence of um, shop rights raids 
in Lagos, if somebody had told you in your widest imagination that youths will spontaneously, you know, carry out such an action, you wouldn't have believed. And so for a people that are keeping quiet, believing that you drive SUVs, you know, you live in the posh areas, for all of us keeping quiet today, you might be surprised. Don't be surprised in, you know, the nearest future when all of us will be branded as enemies of these same people because there is so much hunger in the land. And then for elections, it is also very critical, both the politicians and the followers, let's not go back to, to our bed after election. The end of one election cycle is the beginning of another one. Let this is time for people to start galvanizing for the next election. The politicians, the active politicians, are already discussing to 2023. Okay. Why the the passive ones are forgotten that they contested for election? Okay. And so, sorry, sorry yeah. quickly. And, and so, when you put all of this in the mix, this is the only way you can have people who have respect for the rule of law, you know, in the saddle. But when you have those who do not have respect for the rule of law, and you expect them to change the position of the law as it is, it will be very difficult. I want us to talk very strongly about institutions, you know, carrying out court orders. And, and I'll segue that into the point uh, Shaitan raised. In the UK, once the Supreme Court passed that order, the Prime Minister didn't even need to say read, anything. Read it. He didn't even need to didn't say need anything. To be In fact, it was the Speaker of the Parliament that came and said, we are reconvening 11.30 a.m. tomorrow. So... Before even Femi Falano goes to the DSS, isn't the DSS willing to say, Femi Falano, please come and perfect this man bill quickly. We are ready to give him up as long as there was court it, order. The moment the court order was granted, it was given, he was no longer in the mouth of the DSS to ask for perfection. It is the court that all the perfection you need to do would be in the court because when we're perfecting bail, it is when the court gives an order, those orders are perfected in court, and then the registrar would verify that all conditions have been met. And then you give instruction that the man, for the man to be released. And then, even if you look at um, the provisions of Section 32, 1, 2, and 3 of the Admission of Criminal Justice Act, even when a person is arrested, by the security operatives, the court has the powers to ask that such person be produced. A person that has not been charged, the court has the power that so to ask that the such person be produced. And then, when that person is produced, the court has the power to review the offense for which he's arrested and then grant him bail. And once he's granted bail, once the conditions are met, you can no longer be saying, oh, we want to receive the other, we don't want to receive the other. In the UK, in America, and in Senna society, these are places where the law works, where institutions work, where you have security operatives that are ready, that owes their allegiance to the state and not to an individual. But here, here, what you have are security operatives that owns their allegiance to the individual. This morning, somewhere at another platform, I discussed, you know, the powers of the president vis-a-vis -vis that of the governor in Nigeria. And so you find out that these powers are so enormous that, you know, he appoints, he hires and fires at will, you know, subject to advice from some persons of the National Assembly. Keep us up to speed on what's happening to Agba Jalingo. Yes, um, uh, oh, it's, it's so sad. It's very unfortunate in this country. The same thing you see play out at the national level is even worse at the state level. That's why, for those of us in Lagos, we are lucky. Uh, we are privileged. We criticize government and nothing happens. You can't try it in some state. You are either killed or under questionable circumstances. Or they just now that you have um, the center is showing how to disobey court orders. You know, they'll just keep you in the cooler, you know, with the aid of a state a sitting commissioner of police. And these are people who will tell you tomorrow during the election that, oh, look, we want state police because commissioners of police don't take orders from us. The case of Agba Jalingo is very pathetic in the sense that Agba Jalingo was the one that called us and said, look, we can't be just being fixated at the center. There's need for some of us to go back to our states and begin to mirror what the state governors are doing. And, and so to that extent, he was one very vociferous guy who campaigned vigorously for the current governor, Ben Ayade. But unfortunately, after the governor came on board, there were issues. And he had a legal fair look. I can't just keep quiet. After campaigning for a government, I also need to mirror that government. I remember going to Calabar and I called him. I said, you talk so much about this man, but all I can see are billboards. There's nothing happening, kinetic crystallization and the rest. And then he said, don't worry. I would, when, when 
the governor does well, we'll give him, you know, credit. But yeah, any time he misbehaves, we'll give him knocks. And so there was this issue of 500 million naira that um, a microfinance bank uh, uh, funds. That's he he did raise an alarm and said, look, the government mismanaged this fund. It started from when um, the president extended autonomy to local government and said, look, their funds will go directly to them. You know. So there were calls to him to restrict that story. And he refused. He said, well, the worst you can do is to sue me if you feel there's, you know, the story is not true. And then he got an invitation from uh, the police in Cross River. While preparing to go on a, the invitation on a Tuesday, on a Friday evening, they came to his residence in Lagos and bundled him back to Calabar. And then from that time, they kept him in communicado, kept him in a facility. How many days and then, been there now for now? Agua Jalingo had been there for close to 40 days now, if not mistaken. Immediately, almost after Shawari. Sure. And then, the from because I visited him, and so from the fillers I got was that, when, that was when he was um, in that facility, that they were negotiating with him. And yeah, this I can say on an international platform, that they were discussing with him, they were, that he should sign a memorandum of understanding that he would stop criticizing the government, and then they would give him money. And he said, no, my conscience would allow me to do this. I, I wasn't doing it because I am hungry. What I want is that money that you want to give me, you can use it to provide good gov governance. So when the heat became too much, they had to hurriedly charge him before a federal high court for treason, for malicious uh, publication against the governor, similar to, and then for relationship with uh, Shawore, uh, planning to bring down the government of Nigeria, you know, and all of that. And, and so the matter came up um, last week, but the court didn't see this. Coming up again tomorrow. And, and, and so... For me, in all of this, it's journalists in Nigeria, especially the vociferous one, are gradually becoming an endangered species. We've never seen it this way, even though, you know, there were times when journalists were randomly picked up or uh, uh, newspaper houses were shut down for publishing negative stories. But the rate at which this government is going, you see governors borrowing a, a leave from the government at the center. So if they violate court order, and then you can also do it at the state level. Even the state house of assemblies are appendages of the executive governors. And, and so that's why nothing really would happen. And the only hope that we have as a people in Nigeria is to clamor for the independence of the judiciary. And then also we the people should learn to know our rights and insist on, on them irrespective okay, okay, of the position let's, we find let's, ourselves. Let's move back to the Shorey case. Uh, Let's talk about you know the future of this case. They are still going to appeal this. I mean, Shaita, you want to ask a question? Yes, I wanted to find. You know, d during the break, I was trying to find out that is this going to be an indefinite hold? Like we said, they've given the order; he should be released. Let, let Even me, though they are going to appeal. Let me tell you what is happening. This has nothing really to do with Shawere. If if you don't know, know it now. This is a dress rehearsal to the event to come. Government is testing the waters on how far they can do this. So what is actually targeted as politicians, if they don't know, they should know now. And then, you know, critics like us. And so, so that tomorrow government can ride roughshod on anybody. And you just be careful. You say, well, I don't want to be showered or Agba Jalingot. I don't want to be kept in custody, you know. But they should forget us. So they shouldn't forget us so that the likes of Ganifa Emi you know, the good semi falana, Bekor and some Kuti, at some point or the other, went to jail to fight for the democracy that they are enjoying today. People, unfortunately, some people, some advocates of good governance are part of this government, and none of them is advising this government that the path that they are towing is not the right way to go for a nation like Nigeria. Abacha, those days, thought he could, you know, once you raise your voice, he said that you are exterminated, exterminated or you are kept in jail. But today, where is Abacha? I'm not proud that to see, you know, the, the demise of any man. But people who jailed Nelson Mandela, today Nelson Mandela is celebrated worldwide, but nobody remembers their name. You, you know, so what they are doing actually, they are testing the water. How do we perpetrate ourselves in office? We saw it with the judiciary. We saw it with the sting operations on judges. Anybody that would, um, they see okay. somebody uh, likely uh, to uh, raise uh, their uh, voice. Uh, so uh, sorry, quickly. I disagree with you. No, 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 fighting no. corruption as no. regards sting operation on judges. No, that, that's 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 a different discussion altogether. Mm -hmm. Maybe someday we would, would still visit all of those. And then you talk about these sting operations. And we saw Gaduje share dollars in 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 in. in, in 
doing um, um, what do you call it um, a sting video also. And what did the government say? What did the president say? But and going, so, going back to section so three hundred eight of the constitution, it can be investigated. It, it can be investigated. Was the matter but, 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 investigated at all? But, but who brought it forward? What, what, well, was he taken to court? Whether, was an investigation set up against whether, him? Do you need to even petition the FCC to investigate the matter? Is such a matter that was brought to the notice of the president? Even people wrote petition. But what happened? Was doctored. The, the <laughs> president, without <laughs> in investigation, said, "Ah, Ganduje should couldn't have done this." The but but Ganduje claimed he was doctored. Nobody even even Oshomole came out to tell us that the moment you join this party, those are not statements that should be coming from. Unfortunately, from a, 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 a national chairman of a party that is fighting corruption. You know, so let's not even go there because but tomorrow. They will argue and say, let me is in tell jail. You, then let me tell you. Do you know when Darius case started? So when we get get a drop out of this ocean, we shouldn't, you know, beat our chest to say we have done much. What I'm saying is that the president can do more. This government can do so much. Tomorrow, don't be surprised. It's all it. All they need now, all the government need now to silence you is to say, oh, this man is corrupt. And then anybody will shout hallelujah. He's corrupt. Is there nobody who's not corrupt in Nigeria? You know, I'm not saying don't fight corruption, but the best way to fight corruption should be plugging systemic loopholes. Well, I'm talking about even the vice president's case now. You know, there can be no smoke without fire. But in all of this, the government has said, oh, there is no problem. Everything, all is well. The vice president has said, I will remove my cloak of immunity. But he doesn't have immunity for prosecution from an investigation, that's, that's, sorry. That's a talk and I'm so bringing back to this to issue to Showere's case. The DSS had said Showere ought not to be granted bail. That uh, being somebody who's standing trial for treasonable felony and that he ought not to be granted bail. And I want to say it here today that they should go and read section 161 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. It's a law that was passed in 2015 that they have, you know, boasted, has enhanced the Administration of Criminal Justice. The judge, the bail, even for capital punishments, is at the discretion of the judge. Once exceptional circumstances like ill health can, can, can be proven. And, and so, again, another thing they have succeeded in doing, it's, for me, it's a threat. It's like a threat to would-be judge who will eventually handle the matter to say, look, um, we'll petition the NGC or that we don't like the way this man... You don't do that for a matter that is recorded. You can discuss the facts for public interest sake, but not to begin to issue threats or to begin to sit on appeal as an appellate court over a matter that the judge had decided on. If you want to go on appeal, you have liberty to file a notice of appeal and go argue your... Uh, 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 matter at the appellate court why bail ought not to have been granted but to resort to a public opinion and begin to subtly threaten you know a judge for carrying out his constitutional responsibility for me is an irresponsible act outrageous display of irresponsible of irresponsibility of the highest order coupled with the fact that you have intentionally and vexatiously refused to obey that said order meanwhile you were the same person that went to that same court to ask for 90 days to keep him. And the court said, no, 90 days is too much. I'll give you 45 days. And after 45 days, you were so happy to tell the world that you, you are keeping him on the order of the courts. The same order, the same court now says, no, that order I gave you had expired. Allow him to go, but let him deposit his national passport. So since you have a charge against him, so in the event that you want to charge him, and then also release him to a responsible senior advocate, and you say you have not seen the, the charge. Just like what happened during the era of Gulag Jonathan, where a sitting president of the Court of Appeal, the NJC, asked for a suspension, and on a Sunday, the president acted on it. But when the same NJC said, look, we have found nothing against him, reinstate him, they said the matter was in court. You see, government can be very funny in Nigeria. And then unfortunately, some of these people, they leave government tomorrow, and then they want to claim sanctimony, sense, as, as if, you know, we, we because we all have a short memory, so we don't remember this thing. But lastly, lastly, this government should remember, like I always say, the precedent you set today, the precedent you set today, others, when you leave office, maximum is eight years. When you leave office, others might use it against you or against people close to you. All right, Liberals, as we, as we wrap up, there's three arms of government. Executive, legislature, and judiciary. Apparently, the executive is so powerful in this country. When are we going to have 
conversations about devolution of power from the executive as we wrap up in less than one. I told somebody this morning, I said those days when we discuss in government, when we discuss uh, British Parliament, you said the British Parliament, not the British Prime Minister now, the British Parliament is so powerful that they can turn a man to a woman and a woman into a man. But unfortunately here, we don't discuss, when we discuss such powers, it's not in the Nigerian Parliament, it is in the President. The President of Nigeria is so powerful that he can turn a man to a woman okay. and a woman into a man. Okay. But we need to, we need to.